little service going to be a little different today. Uh, we're going to ask if you're able uh, to stand and sing uh, our medley with us. It should be up on the screen, hopefully. Just a medley of some songs here. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Good morning. Glad you're here in the house of the Lord today. Today for announcements, today is our winter mission celebration offering Sunday. Uh, and then we'll have soup bean dinner afterwards. Everybody's welcome. Smells good, looks good, and I'm sure it'll taste good when we get downstairs. Our offerings today go to support our local line of giving, Judy's Place, and UMCOR Advanced Projects. Our national line of giving is the Red Bird Clinic Community Health. Our international line of giving is Congo Restoration. And if you want some more information, there's some stuff on the bulletin, back, bulletin board back there. Our altar flowers this morning are given to honor and thank our children and young people who serve the Lord here at Salem by helping out in our worship service as an acolyte, working with the media, media, media system, providing special music or shopping for the backpacks and putting them together. And if you've not had a chance to sign up for flowers this year, the uh, list is on the bulletin board. Surprise somebody and let them know they're special. 
Other January activities is on the 19th at 5 p.m. we have a now committee meeting and at 5.30 a board meeting. The 22nd, the Methodist Mountain Mission Truck will be here. The 25th is the 2.30 p.m. PPR committee members to meet with the district superintendent at the Pike for United Methodist Church. 26, yeah. 26. I think so. I might not have. <laughs> the 26th is also the 3 p.m. Cedar Creek Assisted Living Facility Worship Service. Any other announcements? If nothing else, we ask our pastor to come lead us in prayer. Any unspoken requests for lifting your hands? God bless you, and uh, God knows and sees those hands. And let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you for this day, and thank you for our time to come together. And Lord, we know that this is a time that uh, we don't take lightly, but we, we bring to you our burdens, our petitions our supplications for others. And, and Lord, there are many, as we think of those in our own congregation and those around the world. And God, we think today of those in our, it's been on our news, the Puerto Rican earthquakes, those that died in tornadoes uh, all over the U.S., and, the servicemen that were killed in Afghanistan, those that have been victims of the wildfires in Australia, and many, many, and countless others, Lord, that are around our world that suffer violence, torture, persecution, and death. And even those in our own congregation that are affected by loss, and Father, grief and all these things. You know our needs, God. You know our hearts and what we stand in need of. Maybe there's someone here today that needs a special touch from the Master. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. And I pray, Father, that God, if you'd bid us to come to you, and if you bid us to serve you in any way, that we would be like Isaiah that would say, here I am, send me. And so I pray, Father, today that you bless each and every one here, and we pray as you taught your disciples to pray, our Father who art in heaven. Does anybody know what 
This is? That looks like more places where you need to go. Where you need to go. Southeast, west, north. Oh, yeah. So those are different cardinal directions. So this is the compass, all right? Where you need to go. Yes. These are very useful, like if you're going hiking or maybe you get lost. And what's really neat, if you guys notice, it always points north, okay? So no matter where you're at, you can look at a compass and see where you go as go north. Now, does anybody know what we use these for more often? For when you're lost. For when you're lost sometimes. Now, can we use a compass or a road map to help us get out of difficult situations? What do you think? Uh, Maybe if we get lost, right? Now, can we use a compass and a road map to do the right thing? Are they going to tell us to do the right thing? They are? Okay, well, what if, what if is a road map going to tell you whether or not you should go and help somebody? So who do we follow to do that? Who tells us whether or not we're doing the right thing? God. Oh, that's great. Good job, Blake. So God and Jesus, that's who we follow by example. What are some different things that God and Jesus tell us to do? Maybe. Let us go places. Do what? Let us go places. Let us go places. Maybe Jesus helps us stand up for those that need, um, they are getting bullied. Or maybe it tells us that we need to help those that are maybe less fortunate, right? Maybe you see somebody that's cold and give them your jacket. All right? So in short, the main thing to remember is that Jesus is our compass. All right? And he will help us find the way and do the right things. All right? So today, I'm going to give each of you your own compass. There you go. They are cool, aren't you? I need you like that for a You want a compass? No? <laughs> All right. So the main thing to remember, guys, whenever you're getting lost or you need direction, all right, you can follow God and he will help you know what to do. All right? All right. So let's all pray. Close our eyes. Dear God, thank you for these wonderful children and just continue to let them shine their light in the world and just follow your example and be the best they can be each and every day. And continue to forgive us for our sins and every prayer. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Did you want to, Blake? Yep. All right. No, no. Lily here today. Go back to your parents. I met Larry um, the first time my dad went to the ICU, um, and he was really a blessing to us. And any time I'd call him to come and pray, he was there. Um, me and my dad used to go around a lot when he was well and sing. He could play anything. Um, but this is my uncle Paul, my dad's brother. He can play anything with strings too. Um, but just pray for us. This is kind of, I've only sung maybe one song. I sing one song at church all the time, and that's my testimony song. Um, the time that I was talking about when I met Larry, uh, it was 4th of July that year, and my dad was on life support. We'd found him unresponsive, and I was out in the waiting room, and my dad and I had sung this song, Your Cries Have Awoken the Master, all the time. And I was playing a video, shared it on Facebook, and I said, Lord, please hear my cries. And the chaplain came on and was reading out of Psalms when David, you know, cried out to the Lord. And after that, I had such a peace. And after that, I had almost four more years with my dad. So I thank God for that. But just pray for us. It's kind of hard.
I'm still here. I guess I should my dad passed away. It's been almost a year. Uh, I didn't really throw that part in there. I guess you could have kind of figured it out, but it's been a rough year. But God got me through it. <laughs> I'll say I'm glad I could stand up here and say that I'm a Christian. Amen. I just found out uh, the first part of December, I've got a spot on my lung. And they're thinking it's cancer, so just keep me in your prayers when you come.
as I kneel in the darkness in the middle of the night. I'm praying for assurance. Everything's gonna be alright. Lord, I Scripture text is taken from third chapter of Matthew, beginning with verse 13, the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and you come to me. But Jesus answering said to him, Permit it at this time. For in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. And after being baptized, Jesus went up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened. 
And he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and coming upon him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful sacrament of baptism that you've given to us and the beautiful and inspiring way that it's used over and over among Christians throughout the world. Bless our pastor now as he comes and leads a service and talks about this and opens a word to us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, uh, Christy, for y'all's singing and beautiful. We'll be praying for your brother. And thank you for blessing us with those beautiful songs today. I think it might, it may surprise some of you to hear me say this, uh, but I'm going to say it. Um, I don't know how to preach. Some of you figured that out already, but I, I realized I don't really know how to preach. I mean, I've only been practicing this thing for uh, almost 40 years now. Hard to believe. But what I think part of the problem is, is people don't know how to listen. People don't listen. And more accurately, people don't hear. They just don't hear. And it's not that I haven't tried to get you to hear, but I can see it. I, I, I've been doing this a while, and I look back sometimes, and I, I see the blank stares. And I, you know, there's so many distractions in church. The people's attention spans about like that, and it doesn't take much for someone to lose their focus of what's going on. And, you know, I can understand. I've been where you are. And, you know, you get things, you're thinking about what's going on later, and, and your mind is somewhere else, or somebody gets up and you, you lose concentration. People just don't hear. They don't seem to get it. And it's not like I haven't tried. You know, I mean, I, I, do, the, I do the work. I, I have, uh, you know, I've, I've studied under some great preachers. One of my, uh, not only in Bible college, but uh, one of my favorite homiletical professors was Dr. James Callis, who's gone on to be with the Lord. And he was such a wonderful preacher, and he tried to teach us uh, knotheads how to preach a little bit, even to preach without notes. And I could sit in a room and listen to him speak about uh, the, the groceries or the weather. And he did it in such an eloquent way, it just was captivating. And so I do my homework, and I, and I study, and I get, try to get ready, and I, I spend time, you know, looking at the, the text all week. And then I get up here, and I pour it out, and I realize they're not getting it. They're just not getting it. And I see it sometimes, and I think, what is the problem with they're just not seem, seeming to, to get it? What's going on? that they're not getting. I mean, after all, you know, you do this, uh, you know, and, and I try to come up with a, a really good sermon, and, and, you know, sometimes, you know what really gets me is that uh, sometimes I, I, I put a lot into it, and then I realize it flopped anyway. And then I get to thinking, it's a miracle that anybody gets it. Because there are so many distractions between what's going on in the world and what's going on in our personal lives, what's going on in the church, our ADD, sin, all kinds of things, our own hormones, our lives, changes and all this. No wonder it's a miracle anybody ever gets it. That you ever get it at all is really, really is. And so... We, we go on and, and we, we preach and we do this and we wonder and I look out sometimes in the congregation and not just in this church and others and I'm like wait they're not getting it what am I doing wrong what am I doing that I, I what do I need to do different that, so they can get it and it's kind of like um, 
you know, trying to to get people who of the who are of the world to understand heavenly things. You know, Jesus tried that with Nicodemus, didn't he? And Nicodemus didn't get it. And so sometimes it just it just feels like that. And, and I think you know what what is the problem? What what is it that that's going on? A lot of times people just don't get it. But I want to tell you something. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. You know what really gets me sometimes is on those Sundays when I have a sermon that I know I've, I, it's not a particularly good sermon. And it's one of those that I have uh, I failed miserably at getting my point across and my illustrations were poor and, and I just didn't feel like I had anything to offer. Like some, I wake up and I say, God, I have nothing to give these people. And I do my best and I stutter and I stammer and I walk out back to the back and somebody walks up to me, reaches out their hand with a tear in their eye and a smile on their face and say, thank you, Pastor. That was meant for me. I got it. And I'm like, you got it? You got what? I know a bad sermon when I hear it, you know, and, and I, I didn't do a very good job. I don't know what you got. How did you get anything out of that? It would take a miracle. You see, maybe, just maybe there's something supernatural that's going on here. One day, John was down at the river just an ordinary day, baptizing people and preaching the Word, just like He did many times, preaching that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and basically saying Jesus is coming soon, and people were coming, and some of them would interrupt the sermon, his uh, sermon with questions like, uh, are you the Messiah? And he would say, no, I'm not the Messiah, but the one coming after me, I'm not even worthy to unloose his sandals. And then people come to be baptized. It was a Jewish form, a ritual at that time, and a baptism of repentance. But then Jesus comes to be baptized, not because He needed to repent of anything, but He wanted to identify with sinners like you and me. And Jesus comes down to the water, and John at first is reluctant to do it, but finally Jesus says it's to fulfill all righteousness. And John reluctantly baptizes Jesus into the water of the Jordan River. And then it happened. Then it happened. All of a sudden, there was a voice. And there was a dove. And the fire fell. Heaven opened up. And God came down. It's kind of like that uh, Forrest Gump show, you know, where Lieutenant Dan shows up at the shrimp boat and they've been fishing and trying to get any. They couldn't find anything. They were coming up empty and Lieutenant Dan looks at Forrest Gump and says, where is this God of yours? The storm begins to roll in and all of a sudden Forrest Gump says, it's funny that he said that because right about then, God showed up. Well, I want to tell you, God showed up at the baptism of Jesus. And it's not the only time He showed up. You think about the Mount of Transfiguration and the face of Jesus was illuminated and Moses and Elijah comes and Peter says, it's good that we be here. This is a good place to be. The day of Pentecost when the fire fell, people got saved and began to speak, and they understood the language of one person speaking. Everybody understood. God showed up. And I think about that, and I realize today that if anybody gets anything that I say, God's going to have to show up. You see, the problem, you know, is not necessarily the preacher. The problem is that we don't hear sometimes. But if we're going to hear, and if we allow our hearts to hear, God could show up, and God will show up if we want Him to. But He shows up not always like the day of Pentecost. Not always like the day of baptism of Jesus. John Wesley 
refer to these as uh, means of grace. Means of grace is, is sacred moments where you find yourself in the presence of a holy God. Where you are aware that there's something supernatural going on. Something that's beyond you. Something that's beyond this world. That you're in the middle of something holy. And you almost like Moses say, I'm about to take my shoes off because I'm on holy ground. And it may happen to you at your baptism. It may happen to you at the birth of a child. It may happen to you in a church service like this or, uh, or at a hospital bed or whatever. But somewhere, sometime, it will happen to you. If it hasn't, it will if you let it. Another thing that amazes me is that I get up here on Sunday morning and I try to preach a sermon. And uh, I realize, I, you know, I blew it. And I look Sunday morning, I come back the next week, and you come back. I'm like, wow, they came back. <laughs> and, I, and I realized, you're not coming for me. There's something going on here that's bigger than you, and it's bigger than me. You're coming for something that I can't even give myself. Some of you have been there. There's been those times in your life, maybe it's been a while, you felt that little touch. Like Christy was singing, oh, the master was awoken. You felt the presence of God in your life. And maybe it's been a while since you felt the presence of God in your life, but you know what the fire feels like. You know what His presence feels like, and you, you come again because you want to feel that again. And I'm going to tell you today, that it, unless God shows up, unless the Holy Spirit is in, involved in our worship, it's not really worship. Song says, brethren, we have met to worship and adore the God above. Will you pray with all your power as we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. Brethren, pray, and heavenly manna will be showered all around. I'm talking about something real here. I'm talking about something I hope you can experience at one time in your life. Because once you have known it, once you have felt it, once you have experienced it, you will never be the same again. And you'll be like that drug addict that's always trying to get that fix again because you want to feel that power again. Not every Sunday is going to be like the day of Pentecost. I realize that. But having known the presence of God, having felt the loving hands of God wrapped around you, there was nothing in this world like that. Amen? There's just nothing that can ever be described. I can't even make you understand the love of God. And yes, today I think what we do in our services, everything we do, we understand that unless God is in it, it doesn't have a lot of value. You know, in our church, we don't turn anyone away for communion. And we don't turn anyone away for baptism. We don't care how old you are. And you may say, well, children don't understand. They can't cite the Apostles' Creed. And they don't know the Ten Commandments. They, they don't get it. If they get it, it would take a miracle. <laughs> yeah. And so what we do is we do it in, in, in sort of a promise. As we bring our children, we say we're going to raise them up in the Lord and with the hope and a promise that someday they will get it. Someday they'll be sitting in the church like you and are right now. And the word will be preached. And maybe they've heard that same word a thousand times, but all of a sudden it'll be different that time. And they'll, feel, they'll hear the voice of heaven. Not long ago, I was asked to go visit a patient, and 
this particular patient I've seen many times before. And he had been at death's door before. But this time was different. He said, I, I, I want to get right with God. He said, I've had too many chances and I know there's going to come a time I'm going to come in here and I won't get to go out of the hospital. Now what did I do? Nothing. I just showed up. But more importantly, God showed up. The Bible says that no man cometh to the Father unless my spirit draws him to him. And so today, it's all about the presence of Christ.